How many times does a car model have to die before it's gone forever? Well, when it comes to the Camaro, that's an answer we may never know. Hi there, Rick DeBrew, another chapter in the automotive evolution here once again at the Martin Auto Museum, a great collection, more than 170 cars in Phoenix that really spans the full automotive spectrum from the really old stuff to the really modern stuff to the 2000s, like this 2002 35th anniversary Camaro. All right, we all know the history of the Camaro by now, right? It was a little late to the party. The Mustang had come out in 1964 when it was introduced for a 65 model year. They didn't come out with the Camaro until 1967. I mean, they were a couple years short on that. But for what it's worth, when they did come out with the Camaro, they did a great job. Whereas the Mustang was built on the old Falcon chassis, the Camaro was built on the new Nova chassis. It was much more forward looking. And, of course, the Mustang and the Camaro were battling it out in the pony car wars for decades, duking it out to see who could be the leader of the pack, shall we say. The Z28, of course, was one of the big models of the Camaro. There was also the IROC. They had all kinds of great models. This was the fourth generation of the Camaro. Now, that fourth generation started in 1993, went all the way to 2002. And to be honest with you, it was a great redesign for the Camaro in 1993. One of the things they wanted to do was really change the suspension, both front and rear. Unfortunately, they didn't quite have the money to do the independent rear suspension in the rear, but they did revise the front suspension and made this a much better handling car. But when they kept moving through the years, sales of the Camaro kept going down. There were some other problems we'll get into in a moment, but the sales were the primary number. It just wasn't selling enough. And as a result, in 2002, they finally said, maybe it's time for the Camaro to come to an end. And this was the 35th anniversary of the Camaro. You think about it, 2002. Here they were celebrating the 35th anniversary. In fact, their brochure said a 35-year love affair with no end in sight, when in fact there was an end in sight. Instead of just being a celebration of the 35th anniversary of the Camaro, it was actually a celebration of the end, or at least the end the first time around for the Chevrolet Camaro. All right, before we talk about the demise of the Camaro, let's talk about this cool 2002 35th anniversary edition. It wasn't just an appearance package with fancy stripes on it. No, this was pretty cool all the way around. They would start with an SS version. Now that alone was more than $3,000. Then you were gonna tack on another $2,500 to get the 35th anniversary SS edition. And with that, well, the first thing you got was this bright red exterior. You also got these cool silver stripes that went all the way from the front to the back. You got this matte hood right here. You also got some special 10 spoke wheels. They were machined out and they were pretty neat. Unique front grille with a panel right there which said Camaro on it. You also got some exclusive badging all the way around. Inside, we'll show that in a minute, but you got black leather seats with SS and special embossed writing on it, as well as some gray inserts. So it wasn't just an appearance package. It wasn't just a bunch of decals. This 35th anniversary was pretty special. And you also got the big engine, which was a really important part of this. All right, so let's talk about that engine. In 2002, you actually had a couple of engine options if you were going to be buying a Camaro. You could buy the base Camaro, which had a six cylinder. It was a V6. It was good for 200 horsepower. Or you could get the V8. Now, as I mentioned, you could only buy the 35th anniversary edition if you bought the SS package. And the SS package had the big engine, if we can say that. This was 325 horsepower. This particular engine is pretty special. It came out in 1998. It's the LS1, it's the Gen 3 LS1. 5.7 liters, 346 cubic inches. They said it was 325 horsepower, although some people say it might have even actually been more than that. And it's important to understand where we had been just before this. Horsepower had been on the wane, right? Especially you go back to the 80s and the 90s. They, they were starting to come back, but to have 325 horsepower, I mean, today it, it's good, but it's not spectacular when you look at some of the amazing horsepower coming out of Detroit and the uh, gasoline-powered engines that they've had over the last five years. But for 325 horsepower, to be in a Camaro in 2002 was actually really, really strong 
in terms of, of the performance of an engine. So you could go for that 200 horsepower Camaro, and yeah, it would look neat as it was driving down the street because it was a Camaro. But let's face it, what you really wanted was 325 horsepower, and ideally with a six-speed. So you could really use that power, and that's exactly what this car has. And here's an interesting tidbit associated with the engine in the 2002 Camaros. Towards the end of the run, they actually ran out of LS1. So some of the later model Camaros actually got the Corvette LS6 engine. There were more than 3,300 of these 35th anniversary Camaros that were produced in 2002, but not all were the same. In fact, about 1,900 of them were ordered with the T-top. Another 1,400 of them got a convertible completely. And then there was the question, do you want the automatic or the six-speed manual? In this case, this car has the six-speed manual, and about half of the people opted for that. About the other half, well, they opted for the uh, automatic. Now, we talked about the fact that there were multiple reasons why the Camaro finally met its demise, and one of them had to do with well, safety regulations, the fact that they were going to have to change the way the window opening worked. And to be honest with you, this car doesn't have great visibility because of these big, huge A-pillars right off the bat, this long slope window. And they realized they were going to have to make too many significant changes to move forward. And this chassis was never going to be able to handle all that the way they had it right now. So rather than come up with a whole new way of doing the safety regulations and meeting the safety standards that came into effect in 2002, they just decided that was one of the reasons to let the Camaro go. Now, the 2002 is the fourth generation that started in 1993, but there are actually two distinct versions of the fourth generation, and here at the Martin Auto Museum, we're fortunate to have both of them side by side. This right here is the 1994. In this case, it's a Z28. These were built between 1993 and 1997, and these are sometimes referred to as the pointed nose Camaro. When we get down low here, we can see exactly why. See, it's got a nice pointed nose. When we move to the 1998 through 2002, well, these are referred to as the flat nose or the flat front. And you can see why. These are also sometimes referred to as the catfish mouth because of that right there. And there are some other distinctions as well. Take a look at those headlights. These, of course, are uh, kind of integrated units, obviously more expensive. Back here, well, these are the older style sealed beams located inside these coves. And since we're making some comparisons, let's take a look at the differences between this 2002 fourth generation and this first generation Camaro that's sitting right beside it. Here at the Martin Auto Museum, we're fortunate to have a 1968, the second year of the first generation Camaro sitting right beside it. And while some things are similar, yeah, they're both pony cars, that long front hood, the short deck in the back, there are differences. For example, this first generation, this 1968, has a wheelbase of 108 inches, the distance between the two wheels, which interestingly enough is almost the same as it was for the Mustang, 108 inches. Move forward to 2002, it's actually much shorter between the wheels, only 101 inches. But what's significant is the overall length of this 2002 is much longer than the 1968, that first generation. This is 193 and a half inches. This is only 185. This car is a little narrower, the 2002 just a little bit wider. This car had five engine choices, not so in this car. One of the things though that you got on a 2002, well, you got four wheel disc brakes with ABS all the way around. In the 1968, well, by then you still couldn't get disc brakes. It wouldn't become a factory option until 1969. Ultimately, it was sales that caused the end of the Camaro in 2002. And let's take a look at the numbers. When they first brought out the fourth generation Camaro in 1993, that first year was a partial year, but sales for 94 and 95 actually were pretty good. In fact, in 1995, they sold more than 120,000 of them. But over time, the Camaro sales started to dip. And by 2002, the year this car comes out, they were only selling 41,000 Camaros. And when you look at the fact that the Mustang was selling 138,000 that same year, it just wasn't enough. And an interesting story, even within General Motors, is the Corvette. Well, that same year in 2002, they sold 35,000, more than 35,000. And that was a higher profit, higher profit margin car for General Motors. So they just looked at this and decided, you know what, the numbers just aren't there to keep it going. That together with the fact that in reality, General Motors was going through some financial troubles at about the same time. And they had to look and say, well, what isn't making us big money? And the Camaro just wasn't on the list of cars that was truly being really profitable. 
But just because the corporate accountants say it's time for something to go doesn't mean it's gone forever, and the Camaro is a perfect example of that. In 2002, they said, oh, no more. We've come to an end. It's just not profitable. We're going to get rid of that. And then in 2010, they looked at what the Mustang was doing with that kind of retro styling and the selling a lot of them. And they said, you know, maybe it's time to get back into that pony car war and maybe make some money on these cars. So that's exactly what they did. They cranked up the Camaro name, cranked up the retro styling on that Camaro and started selling more. They went through a fifth and a sixth generation. And once again, all good things apparently come to an end because in 2023, the very last of the next generation of Camaros rolled off the line, a 2024 model, and the Camaro, well, came to an end. But General Motors and the folks at Chevrolet say that the Camaro name, the Camaro legacy, absolutely will not die. They're going to bring it back. What it's going to be, well, that's going to be a bigger question. Will it be something like a Mach-E, more of an SUV electric, like the Mustang Mach-E? Hard to say, but whatever it is, the Camaro name, which, by the way, they just invented, it doesn't really mean anything, the Camaro name probably isn't gone forever, and the automotive evolution of the Camaro will probably continue to go on. We're just not sure what it's going to look like.